Hello everyone, my name is Ryan. I'm going to show you how to get the main engine started in the free student edition of Virtual Engine Room. Virtual Engine Room is a marine engine room simulator and you can download this software from drkluj.com. Um, what you'll need to do is once you find the website scroll down until you find the free student edition or this free student, student version site um, and there's details on how to get this registered. Uh, one thing to note is that the free version is uh, version 2 or 2.5 of the software. The newest version is version 6. So this version of the software is quite old. As a result, it has a number of bugs and other quirks, uh, which is why I'm making this guide, because the instructions that come with it don't make a lot of sense and they don't actually work due to some of the bugs. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump into the software. Now what I recommend um, when you first get started is that you play around with some of the startup modes. You might start by looking at uh, how the ship is configured when it's full ahead. You'll notice that when it's in this condition that some of the tanks and other systems are overfilled. And so this is good for learning um, how the systems should be configured, but this mode isn't really a great starting mode because there's a lot of alarms you can't clear and you you can't drain the tanks it's a bug in the software so uh, what I recommend is that you start with a dead ship and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through this stuff I'm not gonna explain every valve I open and every switch that I touch just because it would take too long and uh, it should take 20 30 minutes here to get the ship fully up and running so we have a completely dead ship. I'm going to go ahead and just double check that everything's reset by selecting dead ship a couple times. And, um, and we're going to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, bring up power. Uh, you can use shore power. When the ship isn't moving, you have shore power available. However, I'm going to use emergency generator power to, uh, to do the initial startup. So we'll go ahead and get the, there are just kind of a quick overview. There are four generators on the ship. There's two diesel generators, there's a shaft generator and an emergency generator. So I'm starting the emergency generator now, um, and then I'm going to get diesel generator one up. So that's what we're going to work on. Great, so now the lights have come on, EG1 is working. The diesel generators require start air, so I'm going to turn on the emergency compressor to fill up the diesel generator receiving tank or air receiving tank while that's filling up I'm going to fill up the diesel generator lube oil tank plenty and then get some fuel in there as well this is the diesel oil intake and all you have to do is open this valve it'll start filling up the deep oil the diesel oil deep tank while that's filling up I'll go ahead and put some pump manually pump some diesel oil into the diesel oil service tank this is plenty we don't need to fill this up all the way for now That's fine for now. So go back to our compressed air. We'll go ahead and fill it up to 2 MPA. You can fill it a little higher. 2.5 is fine. But 2 MPA is plenty to get both diesel generators started. We'll drain a little air to remove any impurities. And make sure you turn on this valve to supply air to the diesel generators. So with that, we should have air going to the diesel generator and fuel. I'll go ahead and supply start air and fuel to DG1.
Great, we've got DG1 started. I'm going to turn on the stator preheat there on DG1. Now I'm going to turn off EG, the EG, uh, the emergency generator. That's going to cause an alarm. And then I'm going to turn on the breaker for DG1. Now before we put too much load on this generator, we need to get some cooling up and going. The diesel generators require seawater for cooling. I'm also going to turn on the main engine seawater pumps because we're going to use those soon. This provides cooling to other systems in the ship. Great. So now that I have cooling going to DG1, I'm going to put DG2 in standby mode. So as we start the other systems in the ship, if for some reason DG1 were to fail, DG2 could start up and service the ship. I'm also going to put EG, uh, the emergency generator into auto mode, just in case both generators fail. Okay, diesel generator 2 is now in standby mode, and the emergency generator is in auto start mode. So with that, I can go ahead and start um, putting load on DG1. And one thing I'm going to do now is start the air compressors, the main air compressors. And the reason why I'm starting them now instead of later is because they take a really long time to fill the servicing tanks the main receiving tanks. And uh, this is certainly unique to the simulator. I'm going to open up all the valves to both tanks before I start the compressors. And that's just going to help uh, the system fill evenly. We should see air going up. Yep, looks good. All right, now I'm ready to move on to the steam system and bring steam up on the ship. Bring in some water. While that's filling, I'm also going to fill up the hot well and the boiler all at the same time, just to speed things up a little. I want to fill the boiler water level to just over 180 centimeters and the hot well level to about 100 centimeters. I don't want to go too much over 180 centimeters. 185 centimeters is too much. So, and the reason why is because the water is going to expand as we heat it up. I'm going to get ready to start the boiler. And close this off when the refill tank is just about full. A 
that's fine. All right, so I'm going to be burning a diesel oil for the uh, for the boiler, which we've already filled the service tank for, and um, you have to open this valve and start with the venting valve open. The burner should turn on if you've done everything right. You should see the temperature come up. Watch this to come up a little. As it starts to come down, I'm going to flip the switch to auto. Right there. Now this tank will stay full. Back on the steam diagram, I'm going to open up the main steam valve and shut off the vent valve. This will cause steam to flow through the ship. If you've turned on the main engine seawater cooling pumps, then the uh, condensers and everything will work for the steam. You want to make sure you do that. If you don't, the hot well temperature will get over 80 degrees centigrade and you'll need to go fix it. So if this gauge gets over 80, you've done something wrong. So you'll want to watch this gauge before you move on to make sure that the steam system is working correctly. Great. The hot well water temperature is holding steady at 80. We're almost at full steam here, or nominal steam. Perfect. So now we have the steam system fully uh, operational. I'm going to move on to the freshwater cooling system. We have to fill up the expansion tank. This main gauge here is uh, the expansion tank. I fill it fairly high. That's fine. Now I'm going to turn on the main engine freshwater pumps. I always bring primary pumps up to full speed before putting the secondary pumps in standby. And I'm going to turn on the main engine freshwater heater. Do not forget to turn these off after you start at the main engine. All right, now that we have the cooling system fully online, I'm going to move on to the main engine lubrication system. We've already put some uh, lube oil in the diesel gener generator lube oil tank. I'm going to fill up the main engine lube oil system. There is a bug in this part of the software where if you open these valves, these uh, four valves, and allow oil to flow into the uh, main engine sump. Well, let me show you where that's at. This main engine sump right here. This is where this goes. The uh, software will magically create lube oil from nothing and so you'll need to be fairly quick about this if you want to have kind of a realistic experience. This is our sump level here and you want to get it to a little over 108 centimeters is fine. Make sure you don't overfill these main tanks. You'll need to be fairly quick just due to the bug in the software here 
so that you don't overfill the lube oil sump system. Right, that should be fine. And that's plenty of reserve. Great. Now I'm going to get the cylinder oil tank filled. I'm going to turn on these two valves. We can see this storage tank filling up, and I'm going to turn this on, get this fairly high, over 120 centimeters, but not too high. It's a little tricky to get this to fill correctly. If you overfill the cylinder oil tank, don't worry about it. I think I overfilled it a little bit. Yeah, I overfilled it by one centimeter. No big deal. Also, make sure that you open the main engine lubrication valve here. This allows cylinder oil to flow into the main engine. If you forget to do this, you'll overheat the main engine. So don't forget that valve. Next, we'll turn on the main engine lube oil pump. And the main engine lube oil heater. You'll also want to remember to turn this off after you've started, started the main engine. Great, so now we have almost all of our main systems ready to go. So we're ready to start putting fuel in the system. Before you can work with fuel, you'll need to have steam fully up and running through the ship. So make sure that you do that first. If you have a steam problem of any kind, you won't be able to m move heavy fuel oil. Now the way I like to do this, just because all the tanks are empty, is I like to fill them all simultaneously. And the way that I found to do this best is you open up these valves, and then open or turn on the transfer pump before you open the uh, main shore intake for the heavy fuel oil. This will allow heavy fuel to move past the filter into the system. It will simul simultaneously fill up the deep tank, all three bunkers, um, and the two settling tanks. And you'll see the transfer pump uh, pick up speed here as we supply heavy fuel oil. And again, you don't have to do it this way. You could fill up one tank at a time. Um, however, I like to keep things fairly even, and it's a little easier if you do this kind of all at once just due to the simulation. Obviously, you wouldn't really do this in real life. I'm going to fill up these tanks to right about this, these tank indicators. I'm going to get them right about even with this line and this uh, symbol right here. I'm also going to open these uh, main suction valves, which will supply f fuel, heavy fuel oil, from the settling tanks to the fuel separators. I can turn off the transfer pump now. You only need the transfer pump on to move fuel around the main um, storage tanks and into the settling tanks. I don't want to fill up these deep tanks too full, and the reason why is because the software creates a lot of extra heavy fuel oil from the bilge system, so if you plan on using the bilge system, you're going to end up with a lot of extra f uh, fuel, uh, heavy fuel oil to, to stash, and you can't drain the tanks, which is, uh, I think, a pretty major bug. So 
Um, you'll just kind of have to work around with it by leaving a little extra room in some of the tanks. That's fine for the deep tank. Great, and the main fuel bunkers look full. You don't want to fill them up too much higher than the second indicator. Great, so now I'm going to supply steam to our fuel separators. While those are warming up, I'm going to go to the fuel supply diagram, make sure that the valve is open for the heavy fuel service tank, and just double check that everything is ready to flow into the system. I'm also going to turn on the main engine fuel supply pumps. Prior to filling the heavy fuel oil service tank. Again, you wouldn't you don't normally have to do this. I just do it to avoid an alarm and I don't know that you would do this normally in real life just because the tanks are empty. Great, now we'll go ahead and put the uh, separators in standby mode. This will automatically operate the uh, separators as needed. So as these service tanks are low, these systems will kick on. And we're using both uh, heavy fuel oil separators to quickly fill the tanks. We'll eventually go and turn one of these off. that alarm. I was just saying that the delivery pressure was low. So we can see that our service tank levels are coming up nicely. Everything looks good. So we'll let those continue to fill. Why those are filling, we'll go ahead and start the steering gear for the ship. supply power to the steering gear and place them in remote mode and then on the bridge panel we'll turn on pump 1 and put pump 2 in standby let's check our compressed air levels real quick they look good we have plenty of air We'll go ahead and drain just a little uh, bit of air in each tank. Now I'm going to do a final check of each system and check each system for any alarms or anything that I might have missed prior to main engine start. So I'm going to check each alarm panel. So those two should be on and in standby. These two should be in standby, so that looks good. This should be in standby. And normally this alarm would be cleared, but I slightly overfilled the cylinder oil tank, so the main storage tank, which is okay. It's not, not, a, not a problem. All should be off. All should be off. All should be off here. and just this pump standby should be red. So with that, we're ready to start the process for getting the main engine started. We're gonna turn the lubrication setting to higher, open up all of our valve indicators, and run the ship backwards. Make sure the auxiliary blower is on and have the bridge call for standby. 
disengage this. And supply air to the starting uh, valve and main manifold for the engine. This air is used to start the main engine. And you'll notice that the main engine doesn't start like it would in real life. And this is, again, I think a limitation in the software. So this is just how I do it. So we'll go ahead and get the main engine started. Close all the uh, valve indicators. You'll see that this main engine heavy vibrations alarm uh, shows up until the engine reaches a certain RPM. If you still see that after a little while, bring this uh, uh, main throttle up a little higher. Okay, now that we have the main engine started, we need to remember to turn off our heaters. So we'll turn off the freshwater heater. And I like to bypass it as well. So here's the main engine preheater. We'll bypass it. And this is just to ensure that we, if we accidentally turn on that heater, we don't cause an over, overheat condition in the engine. And the same thing for the lube oil system. Bypass the lube oil preheat. Great. So now we can go ahead and check our power plant. You'll see that our shaft generator has reduced voltage uh, voltage uh, available, and this is it'll stay in this condition until we power up. So I'm going to go ahead and power up the ship. One thing to note too is that the second that you put the ship in this condition and start the main engine, the software will put you underway, and you'll no longer be uh, at shore. Again, you wouldn't normally move this quickly, but I just want to move quickly for the video's sake. You'll see the auxiliary blower turn off, and the turbo generator start to warm up here. And you want to change the lubrication setting to normal. Now if we go back to the power plant, you can see that our shaft generator has the rated voltage available. So before we do that, we're just going to check a few things, a few systems real quick to make sure we don't have any problems. We're going to check our sludge tank level. Right now it's pretty low. If it's starting to get high, you'll need to drain that off to the bilge tank. I'm also going to enable the heat recovery exchanger. And I want to try to balance the uh, RPMs of the main engine so that this heat recovery exchanger stays on essentially continuously. You can see that it's climbing just slightly. So I need to reduce the main engine speed just a tad. Go ahead and knock it down one more notch. Maybe one more.
This looks like it's holding steady, so that looks... Well, steady enough anyway. This is okay. I think we could maybe reduce one more notch to get it perfect, but this is okay for what we need to do. So for now, I'm going to get the shaft generator online. We're going to manually synchronize it. Looks like it's already synced up pretty exactly, so it should just flip on. Great. Now we've brought our shaft generator online. We can uh, power down the diesel generator. Diesel, diesel generator one. So the diesel generator automatically was shut off. I'm going to go ahead and stop diesel generator one. And fully shut everything off on diesel generator one. Our shaft generator and everything is supplying power to the ship now. Now we'll go ahead and turn on our lube oil separator. Supply steam to it and open up these two valves. Go ahead and put that into standby. And we'll double check our sludge tank here. It's starting to get full, so I'm going to drain that out to the bilge tanks. And we'll eventually overflow the bilge tanks. And there's no instructions on how to use the bilge system, so I'm going to show you how to use that real quick. Um, there's just not a lot of details in the software. So we'll just let that drain and go to the bilge diagram. One thing you'll want to do is open up all these valves just to keep the, the ship even keeled and so forth. And one thing I really struggled with was figuring out how to prime the pumps on the system. So what you want to do is, after these valves are open, open up the seawater sea intakes on the pumps. I'm going to start both pumps, probably because the just it, it, there's a good chance the bilge system is fairly high right now. Normally, in normal operating mode, you, you could just use one pump, but they're probably uh, pretty full, so we'll start both. We'll prime both pumps. You can see that we're getting pressure on those pumps. When you have pressure from, uh, turn off the seawater, turn on the main intakes from the bilge before you start draining. Oh, yep, we just got into a high condition there, so we'll go ahead and start draining those out and clear this alarm. Go ahead and turn off that sludge pump. It should be empty now. Yeah, it's fine. Once the bilge water tank level reaches uh, 100 centimeters, uh, you the he oily water separator will turn on automatically if you've put it into standby mode. So we'll go ahead and put that into standby mode now. The he oily water separator will run between 100 centimeters and bring it back down to 50 centimeters. And uh, we'll start filling up this oil collection tank, which you can then pump off to the fuel storage system. And this is where you're going to end up with a lot of uh, extra liquid in the tanks that you'll need to store and stash in various places. For example, you might want to start this uh, 
uh, or you might want to stash some of it in the uh, diesel oil deep tank and then run it through the separator. Okay, this feels like a good place to stop. We've got the main engine online. We've got all of the main systems in their respective states. The only thing uh, I suppose we could do is in the fuel system, we could turn off our secondary heavy fuel oil separator uh, if we wanted to. Close all of our valves and just uh, continue to run the ship. Once you're up and running and everything's balanced, um, the main thing that you'll need to watch is the uh, cylinder oil service tank. You'll need to make sure that this stays full. Um, it seems to use a lot of cylinder oil. I'm not exactly sure why, so you'll go through this fairly quickly. And you'll also need to watch the bilge tanks because the, they'll uh, get full quickly and you're constantly tr pl playing with the levels. There's no way that I've been able to tell to find out the actual level of the bilge tanks. So uh, you'll just kind of have to fiddle with it to get it right. I usually just let it alarm at a low level and then at a high level so I know when to turn these pumps on and off. You may also choose to trim the ship. You can see we're all very slightly out of trim here. So you could decide to put uh, uh, water in all of the ballast tanks sea water and all the ballast tanks and get the ship trimmed up nicely. Again, I'm not going to show you how to do it. Maybe I'll show that in another video, but for now we'll go ahead and uh, stop this by creating a over RPM condition. What this will do is it will automatically uh, trip the main engine to stop and because our main power is coming from the shaft generator we'll lose electricity and the... oh, our bilge tanks just got... Oh, our oil collection tank is getting full. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Acknowledge that alarm. I'll quickly show you how to drain this since we're here. We're going to drain the bilge oil, run it through the transfer pumps, and then into the heavy, the deep oil, uh, the, the diesel oil deep tank. Great. Everything looks good here. And you can see that this tank is now going down, so I'm going to continue filling. I think we might fill that up all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and put some in the heavy fuel oil deep tank as well. Great. I overfilled it just slightly. So this is why I recommended keeping the tanks low, just because you end up with so much extra fuel to deal with. Alright, so this went a little longer than I intended, so let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut, I'm going to uh, increase RPMs on the engine. The engine will trip, that will cause uh, the shaft generator to switch off, diesel generator 2 will switch on automatically, and I'll also kill this one and we'll go down to the emergency generator, and I'll show you what that looks like now. so we can watch that generator come online. Now I'm not going to touch anything, we're just going to let, let it do its thing automatically. Notice the engine status in the lower left will go to a trip state here in just a moment. Loss of power. Diesel Generator 2 automatically came online. 
we'll go ahead and acknowledge this. And everything's basically cleared. In this state, you you could uh, literally just start the main engine again. Everything should more or less be in the right state. However, if we wanted to really cause some havoc, let's go ahead and stop the uh, secondary diesel generator. In this case, the klaxon is staying on because we've lost the, uh, enough energy to run the main ship systems. So I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge this alarm. In this case, we're going to keep getting various alarms because we've really managed to mess up the ship. So with that, I'll go ahead and stop. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this software or specific subsystems, just let me know and I'll try to help you out. I really love learning about this stuff. And if you are an actual marine engineer, I just pretend to be one. If you are an actual marine engineer and you've come across this or maybe you're a student um, and you see some things, uh, uh, some approaches that I've taken that you think could be handled better, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you and uh, get some feedback. So thanks for watching.